So the next topic we'll cover is an overview of our product offering at PTC for systems engineering, windshield modeler. And as I mentioned, this is part of a larger course. So as we get through this, we'll cover more of this content and let me know if you want to access the rest. OK, so the, the strategy for windshield modeler is really to be the system and software engineering system of record. Pervasive, scalable and multi user. And more and more we're um, supporting enterprise level deployment. Historically, we were really more of a work group application, but now as part of the digital thread and larger customers, we're now more of uh, an, an enterprise design tool as well as like RVNS and Windshield. We aim to have a stunning user experience. So we've done a lot of work improving our user interface to be as contemporary as possible. We've done a lot of work on performance to make sure that the system works as well as possible. And as we looked at a moment ago, we've also focused a lot on standards based modeling with things like UML and SysML. A key part of what we do are integrations as part of the digital thread enabled with OSLC capabilities. We also do code synchronization. So from our software models, we can generate code and not just skeleton code, we can generate and input operation bodies. So we have really executable code generated. And we can also reverse code so we can take code and create a model from it. So there's really powerful capabilities for companies that want to do model based software engineering. We have simulation capabilities in Modeler itself with a, a component called SciSim. And we can do co-simulation with the products um, we mentioned a moment ago, ANSYS Model Center. So this allows us to connect to Model Center and Model Center has adapters for lots of different simulation tools. So we can kind of coordinate co-simulation with different products. Again, very powerful capabilities. And we have innovation in different areas. First of all, variability. So as we start to discuss the, the power and the, the um, market strength of Modeler, this is one area where we have a strong market position is our product line engineering and variability capabilities. Modular systems of systems. So with very complex product solutions, often system systems are needed and Modeler can support this. And we can also um, take advantage of capabilities in another product called Asset Library to have more structured, um, managed, controllable system definition and system of systems. And we have model driven IoT. So we have integrations with ThingWorks that allows us to um, connect to code that we've generated from Modeler and has been embedded on an actual product or device. So we're able to connect through ThingWorks to that actual product and the embedded code there and get information back, telemetry back, and uh, access that through Modeler. So that's a really powerful capability. We can also do some ThingWorks configuration, configuring the different entities in ThingWorks itself, the, the services and operations and functions. They can also be generated from a model, a software model. So lots of good innovation there. Let's look at what Modeler actually is. So it's standard, standards based software and systems modeling. Its foundation is really UML, which is, uh, I, I guess, 25 years old, um, something like that. And SysML grew out of UML. It's really an extension of UML with new capa extra capabilities added to it. So that's the really the core is UML and SysML, but we have a lot of extra profiles, as they're called, which provide a, a new meta model and capabilities on top of UML or SysML. It's a modern multi-user design environment. So it's multi-user, that's a, a key aspect that multiple users can access the same model information at the same time. This is definitely a, an advantage over 
quite a lot of the other tools in the market. They might be multi-user, but not simultaneously. They might be accessing separate files. So this is a definite strength of Modeler is that we have um, a database backend. All of our models are managed in SQL Server. So this gives us security and scalability. And it enables us to have this multi-user design environment. So several users can access the same model and continue their work in a collaborative fashion. Most of our competitors work with a file based system. So they're actually have separate files for different parts of the design. And when they want to share and collaborate, they have to share those files. So that's obviously really inefficient in a pretty old kind of architecture and model. We have digital traceability. So really starting seven years ago when Modeler was acquired, the, the need to connect those design tools, RVNS, Winchell PDM link or PLM and Modeler was, was obvious straight away. So we've been working at OSLC integrations to give us that RFLP integration we have additional components in Modeler that support design review, the reviewer tool that we saw earlier, generation of documents, so we can capture up the content of a model and put it into a, a document format. And that's really useful for sharing design information or approvals, reporting, um, any kind of submissions to customers or regulatory bodies system simulation capabilities, uh, product line engineering, the variability stuff, and the code gen and sync, as I mentioned a moment ago. So it's a, a mature tool that's been around for 20 or so years. So it has a lot of deep and broad capabilities. And recently, as, as I said, we've been focused on integrating with the other engineering design tools. The value it offers to our prospects and customers are to shorten design life cycles because we support concurrent multi-user, multidisciplinary development. We can help improve product quality with simulation and design reviews. Reduce development costs with automation for design and development. Things like the code generation, things like the co-simulation that we can do with Model Center. We can effectively manage variety, variability within our product architectures. So as we discussed in the last session, it's a very complex challenge for our customers to manage at scale variability in a product portfolio. And we can manage change with design traceability across the different digital thread tools as well. Our key features that we should always be promoting when we talk to our customers, having a database backend. So really we have a single source of truth and most of the tools can't really offer that capability. Live access to data. So there's no files, there's no save. Whenever you make a change in Modeler, it's automatically written to the database. The user doesn't see it. So we have a, a kind of forward thinking model and always have really that um, it's a design environment as you make changes they're automatically saved and captured in the database which is a big advantage over working with files and i saw some of our competitors last week and you can make lots of changes in a, in a design and they haven't been saved kind of just in the in the working session so that never occurs in Modeler. Um, <clears throat> everything's all automatically written to the database when changes are made. We have dynamic locking to support the multi-user collaboration. So when you access parts of a model, it becomes locked for editing to you and other users are not able to make any changes. This is again transparent to the user. There's no need to do any checkout of any items that concept checkout check-in isn't used. You don't need to click an edit button to make any changes. 
So we have that dynamic locking by selecting something or opening something or clicking in a field that tells Modeler that you might make a change. So it's fine grained and it's dynamic and it's transparent to the user, which is re really good and very powerful compared to our competitors. Something else that we can do because we have a database backend is support very large models. So this is another big advantage, especially when you consider managing things in files. If you're having to pass around large files between um, different users, that would become um, unmanageable. We can extend and customize modeler. We can extend the meta models or the, the data models that we have already, UML, SysML, or we can add new capabilities, new meta models, and new functional behavior. So we have a scripting capability where we can write scripts to add new functionality that's integrated into the into the tool. We have variability modeling, as mentioned, and as we if we get time in, in future sessions, as we look at that, so we have a very elegant and efficient way of dealing with variability. Um, standards based integrations on based on REST, web services and OSLC. And we also have a web interface. So Modeler is a desktop application. It's installed on Windows. It's on everyone's system, similar to a CAD tool. It's a, a design environment that's a Windows application. But we also have a web interface that exposes the contents of a model through a web browser. So we use this to give enterprise visibility to models. Obviously, not everybody wants Modeler installed on their desktop if they're not a, a frequent user. So in that case, they'd use the web interface to be able to see models, diagrams, OSLC relationships. One of our customers is Alstom, and they use um, Modeler for systems engineering. So rolling stock and component product lines, these are a long standing customer. Peugeot Citroen, they use it for the entertainment system, so they're more of a software modeling environment. And they use it to define the control system and the infotainment system for their cars. We have lots of help, so we provide help with the product and that's installed on our um, PTC support site. We have a getting started guide. So if you're new to the product and you want to learn a bit about Modeler, the getting starting guide is a really good place to go. It's, it will get you up and running with model creation in 15 minutes. And you'll go through some of the main features and functionality, create some model elements, create a diagram, run a review, and of course we have support and something i mentioned earlier we have a youtube channel so i'd encourage you to go and subscribe to that and um, then you can see any of our latest movies that get posted if you're not aware there's a ptc community um, that's managed by the ptc user group so modeler and the systems and software engineering community are there so we're really trying to encourage PTC and also our customers to start using this more and more so that we can develop a community and get our users to help themselves build up a body of knowledge. Um, and the product management team also provide monthly product updates. So you can go and sign up to this and you'll get a regular email to a, a monthly webcast where we give updates on product development, future releases, previews of the new products. OK, there's an exercise to create a support account, log into the community and subscribe, but uh, I don't think we need to do this really. So this is just an overview of Modeler, a very quick overview. Uh, maybe I'll do a quick demonstration of the product while, while we're here. So first of all, we have a tool called Model Explorer. And this is used to manage and explore models. So Modeler is 
as, as, a, as I mentioned, as a database backend. So here we see different uh, databases within my SQL Server instance. So if I open this one, for example, there we see different models within that database. And we can see different versions of those models. So this is probably not going to have much in it, but I'll open up this one. OK, and we see we have a welcome page and note that this is the old version of Modeler 9.4. We have a package browser on the left, so I can easily go and create items in the package. Go and create a diagram, a system let's say a use case diagram. And then I can go and add an actor and then a use case. And add another use case that's an extension of the original one, like so. So it's a diagramming tool, as you can see. This is one of the, the better ways to create your models. But when we when we add things to the diagram, it's actually a, a model element that gets created, and this is stored in the database, as you can see on the left. I can remove things from the diagram. So if I right click and choose delete. It's been removed from this diagram, but it's not been removed from the model. Use case two still exists, and I can drag it back on if I wish to. Um, and then I can populate those relationships. So this is the, the kind of basic functions of Modeler to be able to create different types of design artifacts so if i go and have a look sysml we have different excuse me different uml capabilities classes and class diagrams sysml will have requirements structural elements like blocks use cases and behavior so these are the entities that we saw in the sysml overview a moment ago and here's some of our variability capabilities. So we have a, a diagram called variant diagram. And we can use variation points and variants. So that's the, the core modeling capabilities. And then we have model management features where we can version. Manage the, the, uh, the format and the layout of the diagrams. Use some tools that we have like reviewer that I mentioned already. OK, so that's just a really quick introduction to the core capabilities of Modeler. As we um, plan the next session, probably do a bit more demonstrations and um, go through some more content on the features of Modeler itself.